Is President Biden facing a mutiny at the State Department? Per new reporting in The Hill, Israel's war against Hamas is deepening divisions amongst the bureaucratic officials. Letters and memos supportive of a ceasefire and critical of Israel's siege of the Gaza Strip are circulating amongst the department. These letters are putting younger staffers at odds with their more senior bosses. This comes as thousands of Gazans began departing the northern part of the Strip during yesterday's four-hour humanitarian pause. Joining us now to weigh in on what's going on in Biden's State Department is The Hill's very own Laura Kelly. Thank you for being with us, Laura. Thank you for having me. So you've been reporting on a lot of the, the discontent within the State Department. It sounds like from the call The Hill had with Josh Paul, who left on October 18th, there's a division, but some consensus among the younger staff, whether it's because the current administration's actions in the Middle East in support of Israel is jeopardizing the United States relationship with a lot of Middle Eastern countries and their global standing. And there's also discontent around the treatment of Palestinians and civilians in Gaza. Do you think the four hour pause, the daily four hour humanitarian pause will change any of this? I think it will depend on what's actually achieved in the four hour humanitarian pause and the length of the war in general. It's it's unclear at this moment how the four hour pause is actually working. Uh, we see a lot of images and we hear a lot of testimony from people in the Gaza Strip of the real hardship that this is for them. I mean, you see them walking down these dusty roads. I saw images of, um, you know, a woman being kind of dragged in a chair because they didn't have any other way to move her. People kind of uh, struggling with with wheelchairs, um, people. Uh, fleeing from their homes with no sense of when they'll be able to return and if they get to return, what will be left. Um, but at the same time, the U.S. and its uh, support for Israel and in support of its military operations says in the densely packed Gaza Strip, where Hamas uh, has built its infrastructure among the civilian population, this is the only way to try and mitigate civilian casualties as Israel carries out its operations to try and destroy as much Hamas infrastructure as possible and to kill as many Hamas fighters as possible. We hear the uh, spokesperson, John Kirby, being pretty unapologetically pro-Israel and for weeks was very uh, resistant to the idea of having a ceasefire. I don't get the sense that the sort of mutiny from these younger staffers is affecting the administration's policy much, Laura. Um, I wouldn't describe the administration as being kind of unapologetically pro-Israel. I think that they are weighing what they view as one of the most important relationships in um, in the U.S. among among the world. Uh, very important security relationship, a very important relationship based on values. Um, weighing it with these really hard choices of how to address the humanitarian crisis and the position that Hamas has put civilians in in the Gaza Strip. Um, and I think we have seen a shift in the administration's tone and how they are talking about Israeli military operations. Um, Secretary of State Antony Blinken said um, following a trip to Israel last week that we believe there are additional steps that can and should be taken to try to minimize civilian casualties. So this is um, a delicate way of um, the secretary coming out and uh, putting more pressure on Israel to address what is the really high Palestinian death toll in the Gaza Strip. So it could be that this kind of dissent, this discontent, um, this opposition to rushing arms to Israel, to standing behind Israel stall in, in the most stalwart way, um, that the administration is calibrating its messaging. It sounds like staff at the United States International Development uh, or U.S. Agency for International Development, commonly known as USAID, that they have called for a ceasefire. They signed an anonymous letter to the administration. It also sounds like there are some internal dissent memos from within the State Department, one of them actually leaking. Now, you called internal dissent memos sacrosanct. Does this mean the existence of the memos and the leaking of the memos that there's a lot of chaos going on within the, the State Department right now? It's hard to d tell and describe maybe chaos. Um, 
we have seen specific instances where dissent cables have leaked and in Afghanistan in particular, there was the dissent cable of um, staff raising alarm to the Biden administration that their public comments about the security of the Afghan government in Kabul was uh, and, the, and the Taliban's uh, push to um, to overtake the, the capital city was moving at a much faster pace than what the administration was acknowledging. Um, and what people with State Department officials, former State Department officials um, say is that it's really counterproductive to leak these kind of leak these kind of memos uh, because it contributes to politicization of policy disagreements within the State Department. So I think the people who are um, deciding to share these memos with the press have made a decision that they feel their um, their concerns are not being adequately heard and they want to bring the debate into the public realm. Um, but not everybody feels that way. And in fact, Josh Paul, when I spoke with him, he was really against uh, releasing the dissent memos into the public um, and his resignation was his way of bringing the debate into the public sphere. And when I talk to um, uh, former former uh, government officials, when I talk to the American Foreign Service Association, they said that until we see mass resignations, um, that's kind of the signal of real discontent um, and, uh, and and really feeling like the, um, the senior leadership at the State Department is not taking their concerns seriously. But at the moment, we seem to only have one resignation from Josh Paul. Uh, but he also has said that he's been uh, pretty uh, humbled and overwhelmed by the message is a support that he's received. So I think that speaks to that there is a lot of discontent and they're reaching out to him for kind of advice, but they're still holding back from criticizing, uh, opposing in total the Biden administration's policy by remaining in the State Department in government. As we're watching this tension play out, Laura, we also learned that President Biden is going to be meeting with the Chinese President Xi Jinping. Obviously, this is a, a really difficult time in terms of American foreign policy. What do you make of the timing of this meeting happening as the Biden administration is trying to figure out the right tone to take on the Israel-Palestine conflict? Yes, I, I think the uh, the Biden Xi meeting is one kind of logistically works out. There is this Asian Pacific Economic Forum summit, which really makes sense for President Xi to attend, um, and for President Biden that it's being held in San Francisco to attend. Uh, the president has kind of a home court advantage, but at the same time, he's not inviting Xi to Washington to kind of say that everything in the relationship is okay. But the Biden administration. Um, and, and coming from the former Trump administration, uh, U.S. policy has really kind of tried to shift and focus on the competition with China, managing the conflict with China, and uh, recognizing that China is a major player on the global stage that can have an impact in all of these conflicts, including Israel's war with Hamas um, and, of course, Russia's war in Ukraine. And a senior administration official speaking with reporters last night brought up how President Biden is going to raise with Chinese President Xi about China's close relations with Iran. And the administration, um, as part of their focus and support for Israel in the Middle East, is really trying to prevent a wider conflict from occurring um, with Iran. And they uh, hope to have a conversation with Xi about what influence he can exercise to warn Iran from taking any action that might escalate tensions. All right, Laura, thank We've you got... so much for joining us. We'll be back with more Rising after this. Thank you.